here's the analogy. A gold prospector heard about gold discovered in 1849 in California, right? The prospector goes out to this area. He stakes a claim. I find the person. I want this piece of this person. And that's gold. I heard about this person. One way or another, see. And so after the talk, it's transcribed. It's on a tape and then transcribed. And there's a there's hundred pages. Now that's ore. There's some gold in it. Mm -hmm. And then the prospector sifts or whatever he does. So I find perhaps eight pages, but 150 pages. That is the gold. Mm -hmm. What you do is you keep the words of the person. But over and above all that, keep the truth of that person. in. So you make it sort of a soliloquy. Gives it a poetic feel. It's the actual words, but no way do you alter the meaning. If anything, if anything, you will highlight the meaning. You have got something from these people that is invaluable. There's a quid pro quo. They feel good that they're remembered. They're in a book. John Ricardo is the old spa. So there's Mike Troiko, there's Nelson Logan, there's Wynn Strachey, there's Herman Cogan. As Bill Leonard, I start naming the guys. They're my contemporaries. I have younger friends who are wonderful, except for one thing. There's a joke that goes with it, you know. The old guy marries this young girl, a couple of generations younger than he is. They get along very well till the old guy meets a mutual friend a few years later on the corner. How are you and uh, Billy Jean doing? He said, ah, we split up. How come? She didn't know the songs. And so in a sense, they don't know the songs. It's not their fault. But I have wonderful friends, you know. You among them, you got to start running them off. Great friends and neighbors, but it's not their fault. It's a question of the calendar. It's the, <laughs> they don't know the song. Uh, We're sitting here in your house. It yeah. was your house and Ida's house. Yeah. So, if you can or will talk about Ida, that would be. Important. I don't want to talk too much about Ida. I, don't, I mean, it's just too personal. You know, I uh, loss of my wife. 60 years, Ida, is a void that will be there at all times. And so you have to become, you have to live with it. You don't say forget it because you're not going to forget 60 years. You don't say overcome it because you're not going to overcome it, so you live your life. Uh, and it's not going to say as though she were here. She's not. Of course, the spirit is. So we have fresh daisies for her here. The urn is still here urn of her ashes and so when I take off we'll mix the two ashes and spread them around Bug House Square. How did you become friends with Mike Reichel? It was just uh, nature. Mike in writing for the Daily News struck a chord immediately. You knew that he was talking about flesh and blood humans. He knew, we also knew he was a very funny guy. And also had a remarkable style in writing that was seemingly simple and yet very, very well thought of, thought, thought about. The right word, he would choose the exact word that was needed. Mark Twain once said, the right word and the nearly right word is like the lightning bug compared to lightning. And Mike chose the right word. And I was thinking, Mike, if I say tavern to you, what's the first thought that comes to your mind? Boo. What else? That's the business. That's what they sell in taverns. You ask me about a butcher shop, I'll say meat. So booze is the staple well, of sure. the tavern. Well, sure. But what else about a neighborhood tavern? You know, you notice in here, they got, they've got a cash register. It drives me crazy if I, if, if I happen to be in a hotel bar or a, a resort bar or any modern bar. They all have computers. They have computers. Now, in a, with a cash register, I can take, you know, take a couple bucks, put in the, you know, boom, take the change out and put it there. With a the computer, they stand there for about five minutes. You know, one drink. I mean, my, my father would have gone broke if he had a computer. He would have spent, he, he wouldn't have time to wait on the customers. I think we got it. I think we got it. Every third Keep thing, quiet. Sometimes every... <laughs> we're done. We have a quiet. So if Tommy says one thing doesn't hurt him in the cash register, I'll eat my hat. Uh, three signed confessions. That's a tough hand to beat. This is Chicago, my friend. 
anything can happen. In Chicago, there were three programs that were called uh, Chicago-style TV. One was Garraway at Large. Oh, Dave mm -hmm. Garraway had that free, easy, casual quality. Another was Cooper Van and Ollie, uh, which Bert Tilstrom was the impresario. Mm -hmm. And then there was Studs Place. This is Studs Place. Any minute, there'll be a story happening here. <laughs> Funny thing, there always is when we drop in. So you and It was a restaurant, uh, just a neighborhood of Chicago, any neighborhood. We called it the near northwest side. I ran it, but there was a waitress, Gracie, played by a marvelous actress, Beverly Younger. And a friend of mine, Wynn Strachey. Mm -hmm. Wynn was a folk singer. He played sort of a Jack London figure, a handyman. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Then there was Chet Robel, a sort of bluesy uh, two o'clock in the morning jazz pianist. And they were the four people of this restaurant. And the lines all came from the cast. The dialogue was our own dialogue. My dialogue, Wins, Chet's, and Beverly's. Special I played myself. Person? Yeah. Well, we heard you were going to the opera studs. We got this from uh, Charlie, the pawnbroker. Thanks. Thought you might use it the next time no, you go. Oh, 80, pretty. Now you gotta wear that the next time you go. Happy hooligan. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way they wear it. It had that improvisatory air, as these it were done in a jazz fashion. Mm -hmm. Well, you know damn well these shows had to go when formula took over, when the sales took over. Then it had to be the mechanical person. But it had to be regulated. And prefab stuff. Well, what did you do then? <clears throat> and then I was bounced. I was also bounced. And I had a rough time because at the time McCarthy was strong. When you don't have a viewpoint, you do have a viewpoint. The viewpoint is things are okay as they are. Mm -hmm. That's the viewpoint. Don't rock the boat is a viewpoint. Don't rock the boat means shut up. Keep your nose clean. Don't make waves. That is a viewpoint. What about regrets that you have, things that you... If you could change something that oh, happened... Oh, uh, too many. Too many regrets. I don't know. Letters I never answered. People I, I did not come through for. The too many uh, ones. I have so many regrets. Do I have guilt about things? Well, of course. So many. I can't even enumerate them. Too many regrets. What about categories of them? Well, they're big regrets. They're too personal. And there are the regrets of people I've neglected. Too many. Too many. I think everybody would like to be remembered, you know, in one way or another, you know, leaving a mark, whatever that is, for better or for worse, you know. I suppose, for want of a better word, immortality. It sounds, it sounds pretentious and, uh, you know, presumptuous, too. I don't know. After you die, you know, you can hope something you did, you know, maybe. This came out because it said impact. It's important to leave an impact, is what you said. Yeah, of course it is. Otherwise, what's the point? show you where it is. See, this plastic bag is where there are 50 of them here, of the book, the one I'm working on. These are the tapes of the forthcoming book, where the circle will be unbroken. I call it my ultimate book. It's a book about death, but it's about life. See, we never talk about death unless someone we know is close to us is either in a coma or dying, and it's guilt or grief that does it. We should talk about as a matter of course. What is the one experience none of us have had, but all of us will have? And that's death, and that's the next, that's the ultimate experience. I'm working on that. I call it my ultimate buck in more <laughs> ways than one. I hope I finish it. Show's over. It better be. <laughs> <laughs>